otherwise. You're just assuming it. Define question begging for me what? in the logical fallacy fall sense. Look, it's question begging because you're just assuming it to be the case, right? There's no inference that could lead you to the presuppositional starting point. Question begging is when so, your conclusion is in one of your premises. Yeah, and it's and my conclusion is not in my premises. Look, a presupposition uh, is question begging by nature. You understand Justin, why? Justin, why would the negation of a position be the same as an assumption of the position? It, it, it just doesn't Kathleen, hold. Listen to me. And I no, asked you. No. I asked you for the evidence for your belief, and you said because of the impossibility of the contrary. Right now, the thing about that is, is that if it's, it's if it's impossible, you can demonstrate a contradiction in atheism, right? Yeah, you do means. not. Yeah, you do not have the ability to rationalize the entire universe into one succinct worldview without making contradictions. What are you talking about? What's I, the contradiction I, was, in atheism? What's the inherent contradiction? I, I, I'm pretty sure I just spelled it out, but Look, I'll no, give that's it again. A claim, that's a you claim, do Kathleen. not What's have... The contradiction? That's a claim, you do not, Kathleen. What's the you, argument for the claim? You, the, the argument is you do not have the ability to form a succinct that's understanding the claim, of that's the, claim, the universe dumbass. without having... A contradiction. Your That's axiomatic a claim, the, That's your, a claim, you your, fucking idiot. Your, an argument. your axiomatic understanding of the world will always lead to contradictions You're in just your making understanding. Another claim, Kathleen. That's not an argument. Oh my god! How do you get immaterial things from material things? Just now you're just asking me questions, dumbass. What's your argument that atheism has an inherent contradiction? The inherent contradiction is just you believe that you can have immaterial things from material Look, things. Look, that's question begging. What's the False. contradiction? The contradiction is you believe that you can have non-material things come from material things. Where's the contradiction, Kathleen? Because you cannot have something come from nothing. <laughs> Look, where's the contradiction in atheism? I, just gave it an to atheist, you. I think you're mixing up atheism with established science. Look, you just what, said what if an atheist nothing just believes from... the universe is brutally contingent. Uh, you would have to show how that could be possible. It's a brutally contingent fact. What's the contradiction? Look, so Kathleen, I'm going to outline something for you because you're a poor reasoner. What it means for a thing to be impossible <laughs> is that it leads to a contradiction. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, j the problem is is that when you shift from me making a claim to you making a claim, the burden of proof now lies on you. Kathleen, so look, I will say the never, same thing to you, you look, that you said to me. What is talk. the evidence? You're just going to overtalk. You're just going to overtalk. It's really simple. Let me outline the conversation. Well, for you. actually, there is a contradiction in atheism, and that's that beliefs are normative, and you wouldn't look, be able to have normativity without direct. Let me outline the problem for Kathleen, right? Kathleen says that atheism, as an umbrella view, has an inherent contradiction in it, okay? Now, Notice I asked Justin her, can't respond to what I said. Now I asked her what the contradiction was. Okay, and then she said creation. Ex I gave nihilo. him a contradiction. Look, Kathleen said creation ex nihilo. We're going to deal with it one claim at a time. And I said, what if the atheist thinks that the universe is just brutally contingent? And she said, show how that's possible. Right. And what it means for something to be possible is that it doesn't lead to a contradiction. Right. So I'm just curious what the contradiction in the brutally contingent universe idea is. There was the actually, she said. One, one second. You said something before that. You said that you believe that non-material things can come from material things. And I assume you Look, mean something. Creation, like, that's creation ex nihilo, right? No, and no, that's atheist, the opposite. Justin, that's the opposite. If an atheist affirms a that's the opposite. universe, if an atheist you're going back, affirms no, you're, a brutally you're, contingent universe, I don't know why you're just going back to that. Why are you what's going back the to the contradiction? That? The original claim was that you believe. Non-material things can come from material things. A brutally contingent universe. That's a that's a materialist view, right? Look, just think about what you're all agreeing to now. You're all agreeing that atheism has a built-in contradiction, right? Nobody's agreeing to that. Okay, you're just good. skipping over we're the part that she said before. I do. What Kathleen said, right? Everyone except Gigi is now disagreeing with Kathleen. What you I don't know what you're talking about. No, Kathleen said that, that you believe that non-material things 
can come from material things. And that I'm I'd like Kathleen to clear that up. I think she means something about materialism, like I don't know, yeah, thoughts she coming meant, from she brain meant matter. Material things from non material things. Well, that's what she meant. Well, I don't know no. about that's why I'd like her to clear that up. I think she no, meant like love comes from a brain or something like that. Yeah, I would I would argue that you cannot have things such as the soul, love, interpersonal communication, transcendental elements, right? Well, that are by their nature non material, right? Uh -huh. From something material. Argue for it then. Um you're arguing there, against there's, the possibility. What's the argument? The uh, there's there's no way, right, to show. No. Okay, don't just make another claim. Make an argument. Oh my God, dude. You know what? Do you know the difference? My answers do not have to satisfy you. Kathleen, you know, all you're doing is making an another claim. Every time well, you yeah, have a sheet of made up of claims. Hey, hey, premises are made up of claims. Now, if that claim needs to also be... No, an argument is made up of premises and a conclusion to support a claim. Right, but premises right. are usually Kathleen other claims, right? Premises are usually other claims, right? It's multiple Aren't... claims, JJ. Yeah, premises are other claims. So right. what's the all claim? These claims, all these claims need argument. Yeah, and so what was the first claim in the argument? The, no, there was no argument. It's a premises. No, it's not a premise. God, can we just mute JJ? It's not a premise. A premise what, what is a claim say? that simply supports another claim, dude. An argument so is just yeah. basically a claim that's supported by a premise. Kathleen, an argument's going to follow the rules of inference, right? A mere right, claim, so you interrupted mere, after the first fucking premise. Let her say the fucking premise. Using, a mere claim is You're just interrupting. A mere claim isn't using the rules of inference. Now, Kathleen, can you give an argument, or are you just going to make more claims? The argument is going to consist of claims. Let's JJ, just claims. shut up! Jesus. Just mute him. That's true. A fucking idiot. Justin's just interrupting. So, Kathleen, do you have an actual argument? Uh, I do have an argument, but you will never allow me to make it. You can make it right now. I don't believe you. One more chance. <laughs> give, it, give Justin one more chance. The, do I need to repeat the claim, the initial claim? Yes. The initial claim is, is that uh, I'll just make it very specific. There is, uh, you cannot have interpersonal communication and love in a, in a strictly materialistic universe. The argument, the, argument? For that, the argument for that would be because material things do not possess non-material attributes simply by combining material things without immaterial attributes you could arrive at a uh, uh, creation that would possess non-material attributes okay jovan do you see the problem yep yeah. come to find okay. out love is a bunch of chemical reactions in your brain no, no, no. What, let Electric. Jovan explain the problem. Someone that's just to prove that it's not a good argument. It's not even really an argument. You just repeated the claim. Let's, let's see if Jovan analyze it. Well, isn't it also the fallacy of the composition? That is, that just that is another way to attack it, yeah. It's simply the, uh, each individual part doesn't have that attribute, so all of them collectively together can't have the attribute. So, so Kathleen, the point of an argument, right? is to show us that it can't be the case that material things could lead to things like love or other psychological things, right? But what you did in your argument is you just reasserted the idea that it's not possible. Okay, so you, that you, let's talk about what was required for love because I don't think that you guys and me are speaking about the same thing when we speak about And that's love, what I meant by the fallacy of composition, Kathleen. So, it doesn't follow. Nothing you made follows there. So I, I think when, when I say love, you assume uh, neurological interactions in your brain that would, for instance, um, cause you to, say, yearn for someone or something like that, right? When I speak of love, I'm speaking of the interpersonal relationship that uh, only the triune God could support because it requires three individual succinct things that are not <laughs> present in any individual material uh, uh, part you have to have two material things with non-material attributes already 
and the ability to have a communicative, com understood communicative experience between the two. All right, you can't just take a material thing Kathleen, can I stop and you real quick? assume that it can have. The ability to have an intercommunicative Look, relationship. You're, you're making with a basic mistake wah, wah. here. You're making a basic mistake. You're assuming, first of all, that an atheist is a materialist, right? So, right off the bat, you're not even arguing against atheism, right? You could not be a materialist and still not believe in God. So, you're, you're just, you're far off in left field off the bat. But, second of all, you're just reasserting the idea that material things can lead to non material aspects like psychology or any of these emotions that we feel are things that you consider non-material, but you're not demonstrating why that's impossible. Okay, I want you to refine this argument to your worldview, because if it is not something that you personally believe in, the then, no, I'm not shifting the burden. When so you say you I'm not speaking of, can I, can I finish a sentence? You have to make is an that, argument. Is that way. difficult for you? Is it difficult for you to allow someone to finish a sentence? Look, is that I something you have a problem you with? You're not even arguing with atheism, right? You've already been – you've already lost. <sighs> right? okay. Yeah, I, I guess you can't, right? I guess it's physically impossible for you to allow right. someone to start a sentence and finish it with a period. Well, you just got through speaking, Kathleen. I let you, you give you, your whole you argument. You just interrupted three you. times. Look, and you just I literally interrupted you, one sentence three times. And then I showed you that the whole time you've been speaking, you weren't even arguing against atheism. You were arguing against materialism, right? The reason I'm correcting you is because you think you're a good reasoner, but you're poor at it. Justin, I want you to refine anything you say to me as something that is applicable to your worldview. If it is not applicable to your Why worldview, I then do I that? don't want to hear it. Because if why, you don't believe do it, what does that mean? because well, if, you don't person, that if you don't personally believe it, then it is irrelevant to the conversation. That's a fallacy. No, yeah, no, you, no yeah, it's not. It's fallacious. It's a fallacious that I have to believe something in order to critique it or even present it. No, you have to believe something in order oh, to I present don't. a argument against my world view no, as something that is valid <laughs> that's a fallacy you idiot kathleen you've, you've spent so long talking to fucking morons that you forgot that you are one i don't have to do that to present an argument i disagree with your premise why would i have to do that kathleen demonstrate it sorry darling you are asking me to, to explain something you are asking me to give uh, an argument within the realm of my worldview. That's correct. If you are to do that, you can either critique from inside my worldview or your worldview. You cannot use a parody or something else that you do not believe in because you are being dishonest when you, you don't use even that. Need, you don't even need my worldview, Kathleen. You made a positive claim. You should be able to support it from within or without your worldview. You don't need – it's not relevant to me for you to prove your claim. Yeah, I'm sorry, but if you are not willing You're to refine your statements, now. You're being if dishonest. you – if you are not willing to refine your answers to some, I'm not running. I'm still here. I haven't left. I haven't checked. It's relevant to yours, Kathleen. I believe you don't believe what you're saying. To do with you, look, my worldview has nothing to do with you presenting an argument to support your claim. Kathleen, are you trying to say it has to be an internal critique? Like Kathleen is just so. It, in, in no, she's saying that like, the only way you can do an external critique is if you use your worldview. No. No. So this is what I'm saying, right? Well, we have a discussion because, you know, this was kind of leading up to, you know, almost and, – and I could have been wrong here, but it almost seemed like uh, a goad into making me go into a pre-sub thing, right? <laughs> the whole point of that argument being that you have two contradicting worldviews, and by a process of a disjunctive syllogism, you attempt to eliminate one of those worldviews is valid. If you are then going to bring in a third worldview that you do not actually believe in, you have no ability to critique based on your worldview. You're just basically saying, yeah, well, I don't actually have anything to support my worldview, 
but I'm just going to pull some of this other stuff out my ass just because it'll confuse you. Kathleen, what does it matter? Let's say their worldview is incorrect. What does that have anything to do with your worldview? You could both Can be he wrong. still show that your worldview is incorrect, even if he's wrong? I mean, you could just uh, both not know, or you could both be wrong. What's the, what's the big deal? We, we, both of our worldviews could be wrong. Absolutely. Okay, right? then. But you just admitted that you're wrong. No, I didn't admit that I was wrong. I said <laughs> that both of us could be wrong. No, right? you don't get it. Because he could argue from a view that's not his, and that view could be true. If he's arguing from a worldview that's not his, he doesn't believe it's true. Jovan's not saying you admitted that your worldview is wrong. He's or he's saying that you admitted that your claim was wrong. You admitted that your worldview could be false and his false. Um, then you're then you're agreeing that um, that you're expecting you, his yeah. that that expecting his to be true to critique your invalid uh, starting point. No, I expect him to believe that his worldview is true. It's not necessary, but it's more fun that way. Well, have you ever uh, heard of Devil's Advocate? That's that that's not true either. You have to believe what you're saying is true to yeah, uh, put it forth. But as I'm not entertain. Uh, uh, but okay, so then let me let me rephrase. I refuse to entertain an argument made from a Devil's Advocate position in this particular context. See, but the thing is, you're making an even more unique claim. You're making a claim that all other views are false. So why would I need to show you mine in specific? Okay, he needs to show you because, all other views. But because it, because if you do not because if you don't believe it, like okay so let's say you are whether I believe in something or not right? does not make it true. Okay, listen to I me. I would argue that's an untestable null hypothesis. When 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 we make these when we make these one on one debates, right? I maybe I uh, falsely make the understanding i just assume that you are going to argue from something that you actually believe in and not a parody of what you believe why in. can't I you just go with the be critique honest. I also, because i want because i want you to be honest so you don't care whether to, your view want, is right or wrong i i do care whether my worldview is right or wrong but i also want a conversation or an argument to be done from a position of honesty Something that you actually believe in as opposed to a parody of your worldview or my worldview. Do you think I could show you a problem with your worldview from a dishonest position? No, I don't. Wow. What? I just thought, why is it relevant whether his position is true or false just to critique yours? Because if you don't believe in it, whether it's true or false is irrelevant. <laughs> Wait, what? You're just reasserting that. Demonstrate. That. Like, why? Come here, baby. Come here. I'm not. I want him to sleep in his own bed. In this instance. <sighs> Is that Justin? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, maybe I'll catch him at the next con. That'd be great. What con? Or who are you trying to catch? Justin. Okay. Gonna have this picture on your phone and show it to him. Justin's Mario me. cosplay at the at the con. Hey Layla, are you there? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. <laughs>